be saying what men do. And I'm like, okay, if you know these men do these type of things, then how can't you pick better men then? You know, if you're such an expert to know, well, you know, I ain't gonna trust him because, okay, well, why are you there? I don't, I'm a woman that wants to flow in my femininity, right? I want to flow in that softness. I want to flow in that submissiveness. And I don't need to be with a man that I have to monitor. So when you say, if, you know, just because you see me with him don't mean I trust him. And I think at the end of that video, I was like, okay, but the joke's on you. When people bring that to the internet, they want people to be mad at the man. They want people to judge the man on the situation. But then they make an excuse. Well, I'm just there because my kids and I want my kids to have. Okay, so how is, how is, how are you excused? for your excuse but he's not excused you know so it's like just just take the L whatever it is just take it and fight it live, live your life go through what you're going through and, and keep people out your business that's that's just how I see it because because what you want for your life it, it's what you want I can't tell you I don't recommend staying only for the kids or only for money I, I don't recommend it mm -hmm. but if that's what you want and, and you, you find security in that you find peace in that Hey, it works for you as long as it ain't toxic, abusive, you know. Yeah. Hey, have it. Are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really, really good. Or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram Reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video. And it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, Go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. Trust. What happens when it's broken? <clears throat> can, can trust be restored? Could you be in a relationship with someone that you don't trust? <laughs> All in this segment of It's Scary to Be Married. I hope that you're the one. What's up, Brave Arts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of A Scary to Mary, wanting you to love fearlessly. We have a returning guest with us, Brave Arts community. You know what's up. You've heard her before on our Life After Divorce series. We've had so many conversations. So once again, you are in for a treat. Relationship coach Brandy Yates. How are you doing this evening, Brandy? I am doing fine. I am doing fine. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, thanks again for coming back. I always kind so, of. Huh? So, so I did want to say I do give this disclaimer because um, I do not I do not refer to myself as a relationship coach um, anymore. So I am an accountability coach, uh, a mindset coach, and I do talk on relationships. So I do have to get that disclaimer because when I started out as saying relationship coach, people were looking for a certain message in that because they saw a relationship coach. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, you're missing the message because you saw a relationship coach. So let me let me tell you what I'm really here for, which mm -hmm. is accountability mm -hmm. and mindset change. But I'm gonna put it in relationship terms. So got you. Yeah. Love it. No, that's good because I tell people accountability it, accountability isn't a curse word. It's okay. 
we all can learn something from it. Today's topic on trust. I seen one of your videos on Instagram and it caught my attention because the headliner said uh, women who are with men, they don't trust, I believe, something to that nature. So what inspired you to create that video? Oh, um, so, you know, I just, I sit back, I observe, you know, the mindsets that we have as women, um, just to kind of see, okay, what are the patterns that a lot of us are, you know, falling into? Like, why are we having so many issues with men? And it's this post that was trending at that time. And I saw a lot of women sharing it. It was saying, um, just because you see me with a man don't mean that I trust him. And people were sharing it like, right, because these men do X, Y, and Z. And, you know, just saying a whole bunch of stuff. And I was like, yeah, that doesn't, because that's not a flex. You know, like, that's not a flex. But the way they were sharing it in the captions they were making, it's almost like, you know, I'm, you know, I'm with you, but, you know, I'm not giving all or I ain't finna give you all because, you know, all mm -hmm. men do X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, that's not okay, though. You mm -hmm. know, and, and that's not a that's not a flex because then why are you there? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because you hear a lot of times, we even hear it now with a man's going to be a man, that whole thing. And some people just accept that. And yeah, I get it. I'm a man, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to cheat on you. And a lot of times it's, it's most men, like most people are, most women say it's, it's the majority of men, but for the, the, some of, some of the men who don't cheat or we can be trusted, they are available. I want to say that as well, because I think when we start to change our mindset to think different, that we can attract different. Absolutely. Um, again, that's why I say I'm a accountability coach, a mindset coach, because that's not okay. Like we sharing that and we saying what men do. And I'm like, okay, if you know these men do these type of things, then how can't you pick better men then? You know, if you're such an expert to know, well, you know, I ain't gonna trust him because okay, well, why are you there? I don't I'm a woman that wants to flow in my femininity, right? I wanna flow in that softness, I wanna flow in that submissiveness. And I don't need to be with a man that I have to monitor. So mm -hmm. when you say, if, you know, just because you see me with him don't mean I trust him. And I think at the end of that video, I was like, okay, but the joke's on you. You know, you, you're saying that as if it's a flex or are you tough? And, you know, he, yeah, he ain't getting all of me. But then that joke is on you because why are you settling for a man that you can't trust? Mm -hmm. You know, you can't trust him to lead you. Why are you there then? You can't mm -hmm. trust that your whole being and, you know, everything about you is safe with this man. So then why are you there? Mm -hmm. You know, so. Yeah. And I was thinking, too, that as I heard you talking, we talk about a, a lack of trust that can go deeper than because a lot of times we just think of trust in terms of just cheating. Right. Like, I can't trust you. But there can be other ways of lacking trust, whether that's lacking trust emotionally you know financially spiritually you, you know uh, yeah. emotionally there yeah. are other ways I do believe that there's a lack of trust and I would love I honestly would love for that to be talked about more you know what I mean but it was like literally and of course you know I don't follow everybody on social media so you know I'm not saying there weren't some people that you know, didn't share it with that, but literally every woman I saw share that, that's the only thing they talked about was cheating. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, so y'all do know that cheating ain't the only thing that breaks down relationships, right? <laughs> and so then, you know, so it's like the things that you talked about, those are absolutely 100% facts. These are other things that I can't, you know, trust you with, but we can't even get to that because people are so focused on the cheating, you know? Mm -hmm. But again, it's like, that's the narrative you put out about men cheating. Okay, if you really do feel like all these men cheat, why do you want one? Mm -hmm. You know, why why are we why are we subconsciously when we when we say those things, we're actually telling ourselves to be okay with it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're so it's like you're putting this barrier up. Well, a man gonna be a man, he's gonna cheat, he's gonna do that. No, he's not. 
Yeah, a man, yeah, a man that's not really ready. Yeah, he's gonna do what you're like. You're absolutely right. But then why are you there? You know, if you're saying you want a, a real provider, a real leader, because that pro that provider, I don't know if you saw that post on Facebook, but that's a whole different topic. I, I didn't see it. What what was it about? What happened? So I talked about how women talk about men being a provider. And I said, um, you know, being a provider is also about provision, right? So provision for you to follow, which means that he will not always give you what you want, but he's going to give you what you need. But what we do is, well, a provider is going to give me, and we talk about materialistic things, and we spin that narrative. So that went into a whole spiel, you know, on that post, but... Mm, that's good yeah I, yeah i don't yeah i don't want to get too far away from it but this i know i didn't <laughs> i didn't, i was trying not to bring that because that's a whole separate topic outside of the trust but i'm like i wish we can really get to the depth of some of this real stuff and stop scratching the surface you know like with the trust like we always talk about cheating like Come on, guys. Sheen is 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 deeper than that. It's not always an issue with their relationship. Let's get let's get further deeper into, you know, real things we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. And and Brandy, you bring this point up and and see this. <laughs> we have these conversations. You talked about provision because uh, now I have to stay here for a second because <laughs> okay. now my now my mind is racing. Okay. I mean, I, I guess that's the the liberty of having your own podcast, right? Yeah. Yeah. How many women, in your opinion, you think are willing to allow a man to provide? Granted, you might not be able to go to Brazil or whatever. You know, you might not be able to do that every six months. But when it comes to the provision piece, how many women that you think will will be OK with their man being a provider without her having to try to take over or you know I'm independent that whole thing every single woman say they will but that's a lot <laughs> you know every single woman gonna say it. well if you're a real man I will because that, that's what they that's what they run to well if he was a real man then I will do it hmm if he was a real man okay then why are you there I always go back to that so why are you with a fake man then you know like what's like, come on, let's make let's start making this stuff make sense. Like, I don't want to be with a man that I can't trust to lead me. I don't want to be with a man that always tells me, yes, you're the leader. You got the vision. You got the provision. Give me something to follow. Give me something to, you know, be set in stone because I don't always know it all. I don't always see it all. Yeah. You know, the protection. You know, that's also with the provision. Protection means sometimes I can't wear certain things. Because I'm going to put my man in the position to have to fight. You know, it's like, so if he say no, babe, that's not good for that scenario. I shouldn't tell you be secure. Be secure. Why are you mad? Because I'm, you know, it's like, you just, you just listen to the, just look at the comments, just listen to people. They, all the women will say, yes, I, I will let my man lead. I will follow him. I will be submissive. I will be all this. Everybody's going to say that, but pick their brain, have a conversation that you will see. No, they won't. <laughs> no because they they got too many stipulations they so another controversy post that i made before <clears throat> and i always like to say if it's not you there's no reason to get mad right right so i say women want men that they can control so i want you to lead but i want you to lead the way i want you to lead that's not letting him lead that is so good can it's you say not. that again? That is so good. Women want men that they can control. If I say I want this Birkin bag, you're a provider. Go get it. Mm. And he say, I am a provider. And we can't afford that Birkin bag. Now he ain't a real man. <laughs> now you talking to your girl. You know what I'm saying? Like It's like you, women, all the women say they want something that they're not really preparing to get. You're not really prepared for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And and it has to be tough, too, because <clears throat> you figure as an independent woman who's been working, because this is the narrative of most women, 30s, 40s, right? I mean, you know, <clears throat> you have the degree, 
you you've had your own home or you had your own place, you got your own car, all these things you've been able to provide for yourself. And then to say that you want that inner man to to provide and take care of you, that's a process. That stuff doesn't happen overnight. That part. That part. We we want it instantly. <clears throat> in that same in that same uh post and that I think that was actually on today or last night that I made it. So it ain't too far if you scroll on my uh Facebook page. But mm -hmm. um in that same post of talking about provision, I said if he gives you what you want and need, okay, cool. Be grateful. If he only gives you what you need and not what you want, also be grateful. The issue is we're comparing our man to other people's men. And then there's people with men who don't give them what they want or need. But I got a man. You know, so it's like we we're jumping on trends and we want to we want to keep up with other people's lifestyles and we want to be in the bad B. Mm -hmm. You know, we we in competition with the next one and I got the best wig and I got the best clothes. You know, we it's like focus on your lane and your lifestyle and build that wealth with that man that you have. And stop trying to make your man be like other men because you're going to be mad if he try to make you be like other women. <laughs> oh, you bringing it. This is why I love having you on the show. <laughs> it's so yeah, real. It though. Hurts, but... it's, it's so real because I, I did. I had a post that, of course, I, I had. And this is no shade to the ladies. Y'all know to my women listeners y'all know i love y'all but there was a post that i had that said he can't protect you because women always saying they want a man as a protector he can't protect you financially if you keep spending right that and that's what i'm saying we got to get down to the nitty-gritty you want a man to provide for you but you're spending every dime that comes in i um you know women talk about Women talk about a man paying all the bills, right? Mm -hmm. And they're like, um, well, you know, you you pay all the bills. And I say, okay, if a man, say a man is in that position where he can pay all the bills. Life happens. Are you a, as they call it, a Proverbs 31 woman, are you smart? Are you intellectual to know that, hey, I need to put what I have to the side if he's paying all the bills? Because what if he get hurt and can't work? What if he get laid off just because he got laid? You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't think like that. We think he pay all the bills, so let me take my money and go buy whatever I want with it. Because let's also be real. If we was to sit down a lot of women and go over their finances, you don't even save on your own. So to say you're going to save when a man come in your life and pay all your bills, you're lying. Because it don't switch like that overnight. Your routines that you have before the marriage, before the relationship, they're going to go over into the marriage and into the relationship. That is so true. That's right. Because old habits are not hard. And I think that's a big misconception that, <clears throat> that most people think that go. And this is why it's important that you take the time to work on yourself while you're single, right? To have those certain disciplines. Yep. Because like you said, it will, it will go straight into your marriage. Because one thing I know about people is no matter where you go, there you are. Oh, that was good. That was good. <laughs> you know, no, that was good. <laughs> I never heard it like that. That was good. Yeah, there you are. Right. I mean, think about it because you got people, you know, the passport bros, all this other stuff. Right. Yeah. So, so you thinking you're going to go into another country, go get you the woman that you want. Right. Your your habits is not going to change who exactly. you are there. I don't care what part of the country you in. I don't care what continent. I don't care where you are. People think that if you if you just put me in this environment, no, you that's you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's you. It's your pattern. You if I just have this amount of money, if you just have this amount of money, you're going to spend it the same. And that's why they say more money, more problems. That's because you don't have the discipline of handling more money. That's why it's more money, more problems. Mm -hmm. If you never saved before you got the money, once you come into that money, you ain't going to save then. That's right. 
you know, so it, it's like we, I just, I'm just like, come on, as women, I'm a whole women accountable because, you know, we bash a lot of men, right? I don't want to be in that lane. I'm going to let them have, handle that. They can keep that. My lane going to be home women accountable. And I'm like, if you're not, if you're not saving now, if you spend every dime now on partying, drinking, latest phones, latest wig, if you do that now, trust and believe you ain't going to say when that man comes save you. You're, you're not going to do it because you're going to think, oh, shoot, I really got more money now because he's taking care of that. So now I really can spend on the things that I want to spend. So yeah. you got to discipline yourself before that man comes into your life. Right. Even with protection, even with protection, with trust. I feel like with dating, you know, the male friendships, if you have them, like you got to start learning the trust with the opposite sex before a man comes in. I don't know why we think once we get in a relationship or once we get married that all the problems and issues like just automatically go like we just flip a switch and it's going to go away. I don't know why we think that. I don't know if it's the Disney movies. I don't know if it's uh, we, a lot of times we think we're the exception opposed to the rule. Uh, we all think we're the exception. <laughs> I, I, yeah, right. Like everyone believes they're the exception. Everybody think, you know, that I can fly. Uh, if I just jump off this 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 bridge, I can fly. No, you no you no You going you going to hit the ground like anybody else that decides to jump off a bridge. Yeah. <laughs> No one is immune to the laws of, of gravity. It's just the laws that God has set in place. Don't get me wrong. I know we're, and I'm not trying to be negative, but at the same time, there are some people that, you know, they are blessed. There's some people that has a little more. There's people, you know what I'm saying? There's, you know, you have those little exceptions every once in a while, but everyone thinks that they're immune to uh, life. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, like you said, marriage, a lot of times people think that when they get married, that all their problems going to go away. Marriage is just going to magnify all your issues. Yeah. And and going back to the trust topic, that's it. What, what bothers me, too, is with the trust thing. You don't trust him as a regular partner, but you're going to marry him and think that whatever that trust issue that you had with him is going to automatically change. I've seen women say, um, you know, talk about side chick. And they be like, well, I'm the wife now. Okay. Well, as the girlfriend or the wife, if that man has a love spirit, that ain't going to change nothing. Now you just, a, you went from a girlfriend getting cheated on to a wife getting cheated on. Like, there's, you know, so I'm like, I know it hurts. I know it sounds negative, but it's going to sound negative when you, when it hits home. Of course, it's going to sound negative. It's going to sound bashful because you're in that Mm -hmm. Like if you're healed past that and you're aware, you're gonna be like, sure, right, yeah, because I, I remember. You know, it ain't gonna bother you. But if you're currently in that state that we are hitting on, of course, it's gonna sound bashful. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you gotta take it the, the same way you're gonna bash them men for how they are. You gotta you gotta take that same bashful because women are not always right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I love that because, and I tell people I'm an equal opportunity employer. Men can get it. Women can get it. None of us are immune. Yeah. So absolutely. I'm 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 with you. I love what you do because uh my wife was telling me the other day, she was like, I'm the auntie now. And I was <laughs> like, You're only 35. Like you're the aunt at 35. I was like, wow, I guess I'm really, really old, you know. So I guess we times are. have changed. <laughs> yeah. 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 So if trust is broken in a relationship, can it be restored? And if so, how? It can be restored, but definitely not overnight. Mm. And I'm a person that watches patterns. So mm. I always tell people, <clears throat> for the people who are staying with somebody who they, they don't trust, watch their patterns. But you got to give the grace to watch their patterns. You know what I mean? Like you can't say, okay, I don't trust you, but I'm going to stay anyway. And then think you have the right to constantly nag about the thing that you're not trusting. You have to give them the grace to fix whatever it is that they broke. And so the, and the person on the opposite side, okay, your actions got to match your words. And now since you are the one that broke the trust, you're going to have to go a little above and beyond 
to making sure that's secure over there. You know what I mean? Like initially I don't initially I don't agree with having to always just be so like um dang, I wish I, I could think of that post, but it's almost like I'm an overthinker, so you gotta make sure, you know, you you constantly communicate oh, yeah. to me not overthink. I don't I don't agree with like I think it's too drastic, you know what I'm saying, to have to always keep you in a secure state. I think that's draining. However, if you are the one who broke the trust, you just got to step up to the plate and you're going to have to do it. You're going to have to overly do it because you broke that trust. Mm -hmm. So you got to, you, hey, if they are overthinking or whatever's going on, hey, you got to communicate like this now. You know what I mean? So um, I don't know if that's the answer to the question or did I bear off with it? No, that makes sense. It does because, like you said, the, the, the one, the, the offender, the one who did, who broke the trust, regardless of the way the person who was hurt felt, you have to validate their feelings. And on top of that, like you say, you have to go above and beyond to try to build that trust. And it's not going to come overnight because you got people who <clears throat> they cheated, they cheated and it was four weeks ago. And she just happened to bring up something about a woman or something i don't know and he's like it happened four weeks ago like can you get over it that's yeah that's, that's insensitive yeah that's yeah. insensitive no i cannot get over it after four weeks if i ask you a question because if you start get to 52 that's also gonna be like oh okay you you still doing something mm. so you know it's like no don't get defensive you broke that trust so if i ask you a question because you got to know, I said I'm a state, so I'm also trying to be patient, even though I really want to scram on you. Like, mm -hmm. I really want to, every time I ask you a question, I really want to get there with you. But I'm also trying to be patient. So if I ask you a question about something, if I, because now I'm going to be watching even more because yep. you broke that trust. Yep. And I know we we got back on chain, but but that, that's a lot of what people talk about. But if I see your wondering eyes or, you know, if you on the phone and you see me coming and you turn the thing over, yes, I'm going to be thinking something now because you broke that trust and you, and now that's where my mind is at. Mm -hmm. So be patient, you know, and answer the question. Just answer the question. You know, don't, don't get defensive because when you do, oh yeah, you're doing something still then. And that's what I'm going to automatically think. Yeah. And that's, that's real. That's valid. Right. And People, unfortunately, a lot of people don't value trust until it's broken. Mm -hmm. You know, they really don't get it until they're on that other end where the trust is broken. And now they feeling like, you know, I can't do anything or I have to explain everything. Yes, you do, because you didn't value trust. Yes. And, 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 and <clears throat> even for the uh, uh, offender, mm -hmm. my thing is, Okay, well, if you don't want to do all that, then leave. Mm -hmm. You can't. Uh, you can't also stay with someone that who trusts you broke, and then feel like that they just supposed to get over it. Okay, if you don't want to go through the the steps and the tactic tactics that they need mm -hmm. to help heal that part that you broke, mm -hmm. you heard me say the part that you broke. <laughs> but I also don't believe in somebody else did something to you. You think I'm gonna, gonna fix it? Nah, you're not gonna project their hurt onto me. Mm -hmm. But if I broke something then I don't want to deal with all the questions and all the, the extra stuff that's coming behind it. Mm -hmm. Then leave then. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, people will love that, right? Because they say, why cheat? Just leave. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's that simple. <laughs> yeah, for real. And, and yeah, because there's a question I want to ask about that as well, but there was something else I wanted to ask. Okay. What do you say to the woman who picks continual cheaters? Like, she... Like the last relationship she was in, he was a cheater. Current relationship she's in, he's a cheater. Like she keep picking these guys that's cheaters. Is it kind of more of a reflection on her picking or is it just that men are dogs? I think it's a reflection on her picking. You got to think when, when men complain about women, the first thing women say is, well, pick a better woman because I'm not like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. It, it's the same way then you complain about men okay pick a better man because not all men are like that it's a reflection on her picking because first of all i feel like now it's like we all got some type of time clock that is ticking faster than we wanted to tick so we just we want to jump fast 
So I feel like um another controversy post I made, I said women make it easy to be love bombed. So a man who ain't really serious about you, if you constantly posting, I ain't been on a day, you constantly posting, oh, you got to bring me flowers, you constantly posting, oh, um, you got to take me to this place. If you constantly posting that, a man who got it like that, the money to spend or whatever, and don't really want nothing with you, he's going to come being exactly what that representative is for you, just to get what, he, what it is that he want from you. And what women is going to do is they're going to say, oh, see, real man do X, Y, and Z. And reality is, all you met was another cheater because you didn't take time out to see what his patterns was. He mm -hmm. bought you those flowers. He he sent you those texts. He texted you all day. You know, we got that bad too. You know, about you got to text me all day. He took you to the, your favorite restaurant. He bought you your favorite color flowers. He did that. So you ignored. You didn't even get time to get to know the other parts of him. And you fell in love that fast. Mm -hmm. So it's That's like, it's the picking, you know what I'm saying? You're not get, you're not giving a person time to show you who they are. You know, conversations for one, because I think people say that. Well, you can be with somebody three, four years and still never know them. True, you'll never know certain sides of them because certain sides come out through tests and trials. Yep. However, there are a lot of things you can know about a person by simple conversation, picking their brain, mm -hmm. seeing the way they think, you know, seeing the way they respond to certain things. You can mm -hmm. know. If this part, you know, you with this person, you test, you just having certain conversations. Depending on what they saying, you can kind of see like, oh, he a womanizer. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have a problem with cheating with him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, because I heard, I was listening to this podcast, um, one of my favorites, and the lady was saying that she went on a date with a guy, and I think they went to an amusement park, <clears throat> and this might sound extreme. But he, she said when they were on the bumper cars and the bumper car, she said that he kept hitting her like he wanted to do more of like, let's hit each other kind of thing, opposed to maybe like racing in the in the circle trying to win or whatever. And she was like, to her, that showed that. Like he wasn't for her. Like he was more aggressive than he was actually leading on just by us being in some bumper cars because it was like he deviated away from the whole plan just to try to hit cars with her, you know, so. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's a little stuff like that. I'm not saying that that's, that's everybody's situation, but no, there's but some little... Good... Go ahead. No, but it's a, it's a good one. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Like everybody is different and you got to find the difference that's in that person. You know, like... um. I had guys who, because you know what I do, you know, and I've seen very strong, independent. I have guys, uh, my homeboys actually was like, they're trying to come conquer you because you're strong, you're uh, emotionally intelligent. So it's like they're coming to try to like break you da down because they feel like they're not worthy enough to, to actually lead you. So they want to break you down mm. so that they can lead. And but the things they would say, they would say something. And I'm like, okay, I'm thinking we have a normal conversation because I like conversation. And they'll be aggressive, like, oh nah, you ain't gonna do that with me. Nah, my woman can't do that. I'm like, huh? Oh, okay, all right. It's you know, it's not that it's not that deep, it's not that rough, but it showed me like, okay, no. Yeah, I wouldn't even let you leave me because it's like you're you're so a it's like that toxic masculinity, like you coming in trying to. I'm the man. You don't have to do that. I know when the man is a man, man. Like, mm -hmm. you don't have to prove that to me. Just operate. Mm -hmm. You know, so, yeah. You can, if you have the right conversations, you have the right experiences with people before getting in the bed with them, then you, you can see a lot of these signs beforehand. That's true, too. Because, yeah, we, we're not going to even get into the, the whole bed part because. Um... Oh, thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> This generation, I'm like, y'all are so sexual. What is going on? Like overly sexual. Yeah. It is crazy. Yeah. It's it, it can be intense. Um, because there was one lady who she of course she kind of she didn't come for me, but she was like, I guess she kind of started this whole conversation. I posted something and I was saying one of the reasons I chose my wife when we were talking through Instagram, I was looking at her pictures because I told us the whole story how we met. She was like, so what if she was 
had on some sexy clothes or what if she, you know, whatever, doing some stuff. To me, this is just me. So don't anybody come for me. I don't know if we talked about this before, but that would have been a red flag for me because I'm like, I was looking for a wife. Now, what you do in your personal time is up to you. And what you choose to post is up to you. There's nothing wrong with dressing nice and and classy and stuff like that. You can, you know, you can have fun. I get it and stuff like that. But the stuff I see online that people post, I've been wondering, I'm like, your booty on the sink? Do you have a man? You you post <laughs> Cause I don't know if I'm in a relationship. If I if we're in a relationship and you, you know, and so she, basically she was basically saying like I was being judgmental, but I was like, you know, this is just my thing, and I believe a lot of other men think like that who are looking for a wife. I I hate when people. That's a pet peeve of mine when people do that judgmental thing, because you just said I'm being judgmental, but you just judge my judgment. <laughs> Yeah, I, when I tell you that, that's a pet peeve of mine. Like, and I, I got into a, that judgmental word like a lot at one point, and I'm like, go get you a dictionary, go read what judgmental is, what judging is, what to be judged. Go read it, and by the time you're done read it, you'll see that you're judgmental too. You're just on a different spectrum of it. You know what I mean? So it's like. How you gonna tell me I'm judgmental because I have a preference of what I want and don't want in my apartment? So this is what I do. I'll be like, oh, I'm judging. <laughs> well, thank God I'm judging right. Because you're not finna, you're not finna you're not finna manipulate me into thinking, oh, don't judge, don't judge. Talking about trust, talking about the the women, you know, jumping from cheater to cheater. That's your problem. Y'all not judging enough. You're not judging mm. righteously. Wow. You need to judge. Judging is a form of discernment. That's what my church wrote. It's, <laughs> it's discernment. You know, like, come on now. Let's let's stop. Oh, you're judgmental. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm going to keep judging. Now what? Because I'm going to judge righteously so that I don't continue picking the same men over and over for me to have to post and be like, well, just because you see me with them, I don't trust them. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. And why, yeah. not, why not? Yeah. And, you know. and obviously, I, I, I picked right. I, <laughs> so. Yep. You know, and again, to each his own, to everybody, but I know what I like. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's my preference. Cause I don't even know where that person is now. Imagine if I would have took that personal and yeah, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just like, nah, I know what I like, and, and that's it. And like you say, you know, you're not gonna change my mind. And like yeah. you, I think it's good that you say we should judge. I think that that is something, like you say, that's a good form of discernment. Like, nope, I, I ain't even mm -mm. Cause, cause there's a there's Okay, so there could be two things that are right at the same time. I, I I hate that we feel like two things can't be true at the same time. Mm -hmm. There are good judgments and there are bad judgments. Of course. You only think it's a bad judgment because you don't agree with my judgment. If you agreed with my judgment, then you'd be like, oh, that's the truth. That's <laughs> right. So you just judge my judgment based off your principles and your morals. So don't tell me we can't judge because you do it. Yep. So don't be hypocritical. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the difference. A hypocritical judger and then a discerning yeah. judger. Like mm -hmm. those are, they're not on the same spec spectrum. That's true. <laughs> That's true. I totally agree. Oh my God. This, yeah, we've been, we've been to a lot of places tonight, but I think this was needed because. <laughs> we did. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I think it's, you know, I, I think it's some people who can benefit from this, this segment. Uh, we talked about trust. So how do external factors such as financial dependence or children play a role, play in a role that a woman is staying with the man she doesn't trust? So is it that she's, she might be staying with him for financial security, or maybe they have children together, and she's just kind of willing to go that route like I'm living a certain lifestyle I don't want to lose that I'll let him live how he's living I see it happen mm -hmm. in which that's your prerogative if if that's what you want to do if that's what you think of yourself if that's what you you know think of your life and this is the plan for my life this is how I see it it works for me that's totally okay just don't bring it to the internet if you're okay with living that and 
you know, staying in that for the kids or staying in that for the financial security, that's okay. Take the L or whatever in private. Just don't bring it to the internet because when people bring that to the internet, they want people to be mad at the men. They want people to judge the man on the situation. But then they make an excuse. Well, I'm just there because my kids and I want my kids to have. Okay, so how is how is how are you excused for your excuse? <laughs> but he's not excused, you know. So it's like just just take the L, whatever it is, just take it in private. Live live your life, go through what you're going through, and and keep people out your business. That's that's just how I see it. Cause cause what you want for your life is it, what you want. Yeah. I can't tell you. I don't recommend staying only for the kids or only for money. I I don't recommend it. Mm -hmm. But if that's what you want and, and you you find security in that, you find peace in that, hey, it works for you as long as it ain't toxic, abusive, you know, yeah. hey, have it. I agree. And I like what you said, just leave it off the internet. That's what, that's what got me because based on, <laughs> based on your judgment, <laughs> you know you 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 picked accordingly and because i i put this on my instagram the other day i was talking about how it's crazy how we like to you know beat up the people well i would say beat up that you know, it won't work <laughs> how we judge people who we chose like if you chose them choose better it's like so many people have all these negative experiences. And we all been there, right? Don't get me wrong. But to the degree that, I mean, you ready to fly off the handle the moment I hold a woman accountable or a man accountable. You know, people, they get irritated with that. And I'm just like, choose better. Yeah, I know. And, but that's what it is. It's the lack of accountability. And it be, that word has trended so bad, I, I was starting to hate it. Like, oh, my God, y'all yeah, trended accountability so bad and ain't even taking it. Like, you just, you using it as a weapon. You know what I'm saying? Like, you said, choose better. You trying to hold the, the person you with accountable, but you ain't hold yourself accountable because you chose them. You chose them. You chose to take y'all business to the internet. You chose to tell people that the man you with, you don't trust. And then if he get wind of it and y'all have problems, then now you looking like, What's the issue? You know, why why you don't want to why you don't post me? Why you don't want to go to family functions? Why you don't want to do okay, you done told these people my business. I'm not gonna be out in public with you. Like, come on now. Don't don't put me out there on the dartboard to get darts thrown at me and then I'm supposed to walk out, you know, hold your hand and be happy, like a happy family. Don't do that. So that person is a reflection of you and vice versa. That's, that's right. You know, you didn't you didn't talk bad about this person and now y'all back together and y'all have a picture online and it's like a a smiley emoji covering his face you know and it's <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay let me stop it's getting late <laughs> oh i want to ask you uh one question it's kind of a bonus round but for the sake of time i want to ask you one question what has your dating life been like since you were divorced um, so my divorce was a long time ago. So my okay. divorce was in 2013. Oh, okay. Okay. So I didn't even, honestly, I didn't even get back out to date. I want to say probably until about 2017, 2018. I was not on the dating scene. I was really unhealed. So mm -hmm. I was going through a lot. So I didn't really get back out until like 17 or 18, 2017, oh, okay. 2018. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's been shaky. I did not realize it was this bad out here. So I mean, I'm I have someone now that's solid, mm -hmm. um, and you know I'm hoping this really sticks because I ain't trying to get back out here in in this scene because it it's it's not good. It's really not good. Um, I think it's too many hurt people in the dating pool, mm -hmm. and it's too is it too many people with trust issues, um, and it's too many users. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying you can't use the person for what you need, but it's too many. It's it's bad users. Like, <laughs> I know I don't, you know, I know you want a relationship, but I don't want one. So I'm going to come pretend so I can get something from you and waste your time. Like, that's what I mean. It's, it's bad users. So we're not using each other for good. 
it's it's bad. It's bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Because I, I interviewed a, a, a friend of mine the other day and I asked him what was his dating experience like since his since his divorce. And he told me it's he's like it's actually been good. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I hear that story. Yeah, right. And I asked him, so he was one of the very few people that was saying that my dating experience has been good post divorce. And he said that it came down to a mindset. Mm. He was like, to the women that rejected him, and I thought this was good. He said he took the time to ask him, so what what is it that didn't uh, you know that uh, what was it that made us not mesh? You know, what what made it where we couldn't connect? And he was like, he was willing for open feedback. Mm -hmm. You, you know? know what? I like that. Um, uh, because you don't hear that. You don't hear that. You you do hear people saying what I'm saying. It's bad out here. I mean, because it is. It is. It is. Yeah, I get you. It is. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I go back to what I said. Two things can be true at once. You know, some people can have those good experiences, mm -hmm. and then you do have people that is not not having good experience. But I think it's what he said was very important. We also have people who aren't act. They aren't asking what you know. What was it about me you didn't like? When they don't have a good experience, it's instantly, oh, this person, that, they, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's them. It's always something about them that made it not work. You know, I'm, I've never, shout out to him, whoever, I would like, I need to go, you recorded that, right? Yeah, I, yeah. well, I got some reels up. It's it's in the chamber. I haven't released a full episode, but. Oh, okay. I need to watch be. that because I you don't hear people saying that. Mm -hmm. You do not hear people saying that at all. So that's interesting. I, I need to see that viewpoint. Yeah. He, yeah, yeah. 40, he's 43 years old, too. That's good. Yeah. So, that's good. yeah, good brother. So I was just like, that's good to hear. And, you know, we need to hear, you know, a couple of more stories. And I get it. I know it's not the greatest out here because uh, I have you know family members who tell me about their dating situations. And I'm just like, I mean, they show me stuff. And they're like, look at this fool. And yeah. I was just like. Yeah, it's tough. It really is. Yeah. Like I got um, and and I I'll have people that say that um I'll see people say that all the time um what it ain't that bad is um you just gotta uh you know choose choose different you know there it go again choose different and yeah you're right we gotta choose different but we're not talking about the relationship we talking about the dating in itself most of us ain't even making it to dating people people confuse them too like I noticed they intertwine that because I've also talked to different people who. She will think they're dating, and he be like, "No, nah, we ain't dating. We was just talking, you know, messing around." So people also throw that word around too, like, "Oh, we were dating." Are you sure y'all yeah. were dating? Yeah, <laughs> you know, because because they may not think y'all was, you know, dating, and that's that's why it end up being trash because the we weren't on the same mind, you know, mindset. Yep. Same page, so yeah, it, it's. It's different out here. <laughs> yeah. And like you said, like you said, some people haven't made it to dating. They're like, we were just messing around. I was like, we didn't even get to dating. We just messing around. Mm -hmm. And then I would also like to add this could this could also be argued because I've seen it argued. But there's also a difference with dating and courting. Oh yeah. Yeah. People don't believe that. I see a lot of people don't believe that. They think they're the same. They're not. They're not. No. And that's a whole episode within itself. Um, I have someone coming on the show and we're going to discuss that, the difference between courting and dating. So I need to catch that. Yeah, be on the lookout for that. So she's been a guest on the show before, has an amazing story, but I can't wait to get into it. And I'm glad you brought that up because people need to know that difference. Yeah. People will argue up and down, though. I'll <laughs> be like, so what did y'all do? What conversation did y'all have? And then once they explained what they did, I was like, "Are you sure y'all even dating?" Mm -hmm. But that's not court. That's not courting. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, well, they know I want a relationship. That that's not that's not that's not courting. You you want that? Did they agree to that? Right. You know, like I'm like, ah. Yeah, and and I and I think too, courting is is more of a. More of like a, I won't say like biblical, but more Christian 
based kind of uh, verbiage. I think courting is a little more, I think it has another level to it. And yeah, and that's, that's an episode within itself. So we could, we could talk about that. Yeah, time. I mean, these, these conversations, these are the conversations we need. Because right now is, you know, all the, that other stuff that people are doing for entertainment, it's like it's turning our culture up. Like this right here, these type of things is what we need more of. Because we do, our people, we need a rewiring of our mind. Like we, we just don't know. And then we, and it's okay to not know, but what's not okay is to reject the information because you don't want to accept it. Mm -hmm. You don't want that type of truth. Mm -hmm. You want us to say that if a man, you know, come and approach you, because that's that's the other thing. Well, he he saw he came because he he saw my worth. He knew what it was. No, he didn't. Like we gotta stop. We gotta stop lying to ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Just because we want a certain thing to be a certain thing, like. Let's really have these conversations and, and learn from other people. Like, you know, we talk about the judgment, but it's it's teach one, each one, teach one. You That's know, right. like we got to get our experience out and hopefully you listen so that we can stop the cycles. So the cycles are continuing and they're getting worse. Yep. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's, it's bad. But hopefully, like you say, conversations like this can uh, we can create some change out here. Um especially bringing on guests like you. So um, this has been a phenomenal episode, Brandy. And this is why I like to bring you on the show. Cause I'm like, I, I know we're going to, I know we're going to stir the pot. I it get it. Fun, it <laughs> and, I, and I'm all for it. It's all good. Uh, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. I'll have everything linked up in the description, but go ahead and, and let us know how we can get in touch with you coaching or other good stuff or accountability. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so um, I am a certified life coach. Um, my business brand is called Conquering Relationships. Um, but I do do, so you can all platform, you know, TikTok, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Conquering Relationships. Um, I do do a lot of more spicier posts on my personal page, which is Brandy Yates. So, you know, if you get a little touched and, you know, you can't handle certain things, don't go follow that one. Just, just follow Conquering Relationships page. Um, but my website is in the link of both of those pages. So you can get, um, I published two books, so you can buy a book. Um, I got some more things, products I'm in the midst of making, and I'm not going to say what those are yet. Um, I got apparel uh, that I create with my I Am Goals brand. It's a confidence brand for men and women. I'm goals. You got You got to know you're worth it. You got to know it's only one you. Can't, you can't be duplicated. So uh, you can buy apparel. Through my link, you can book a bench session or a um, life coaching session. So yes, for sure. But well, Brave Hearts community, you heard it here. Make sure you go connect with Brandy. If you missed any of our previous recordings, I'll have that in the description as well. So make sure you leave a rating and review if you are listening to this on Apple Podcasts. We'd we'll love to hear from you. We get in the rating and reviews up. We will have you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. And also, if you are watching this via YouTube, make sure you share this with a friend because you never know who need great content like this. It could be life changing. All they need to do is just watch this episode. All right, Brave Hearts community. Thanks again, Brandy, for your time. And we are.